for Wednesday, November 6th. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. city, 
would have had uh, a new addition to the building. You know, it's, this is something. This is really something. I mean, it, it's very sad to see uh, people use the city. And, uh, you know, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry because I'm one of the most open-minded people that will ever live in this city. Ever. Ever. So, I think every person in this table should say, who exactly is going to be the benefit of this, uh, these changes? Because we were told back in the day of the West Side Neighborhood Association, I don't even know if they're in business anymore, that the goal was to get the students downtown, to get these single family homes, and it succeeded, it succeeded to a point. Uh, but now I see that the bars are moving towards the bell. The bars are moving towards Johnson City now. And Success Marine's ruinous competition. State Street, businesses are closing. Uh, you know, the Goldsmith, she's closing up. Store worthy of any major city in this country. A very talented designer. A great merchandiser. That store, when you go into it, you could be in Montreal, you could be in New York, you could be in Washington, you could be in Miami. That's how good that store was. And maybe it was too good for this area. So, I don't know what this thing is going to do, but I'll tell you this, I've been around a long time, I've been in planning meetings, zoning meetings, neighborhood meetings, all kinds of, every kind of meeting, I've heard all kinds of BS from everybody. And I don't think this means a damn thing, except somebody is going to use it to make money. What we need in this city right now, January 1, is rent control. That's what we need. How about that from a Trump guy? Thank you for speaking. Anyone else want to speak on the direct the ordinance 19-113? Please come forward. Well, okay, my name is Shauna Cole, and I am the token libertarian of Binghamton, and I would like to comment on the legislation, but however, I don't know what it is. Um, general rent control is insane. <laughs> Markets decide what the price should be. That is a market phenomenon known as price discovery. However, a lot of the times, we don't even get that because of governments meddling in the economy, whether it be through central planning or some kind of twisted Keynesian model in which very few benefit, and then we see a bubble, like we see the college bubble happening here now, and then we see the derivative debt bubbles from the college debt, because let's just face it, that's all debt, right? That's what it is, it's student loan money, it's debt, right? Over $1 trillion in student debt, but hey, Binghamton's thriving because of it. Meanwhile, you guys are like, yeah, you know? Property taxes go up, property values go up, but yet it's the same stupid house, right? I mean, there's been no value added to it. It's just that our money is now worth less because on paper, there's all this money, right? Which means you need more of it to buy stuff, so therefore it just becomes less valuable. I mean, right? Austrian economist? Um, but generally, when government talks about streamlining, that usually is to the effect of um, cutting constitutional safeguards that are put into place to keep from um, power being autocratic, but we're seeing this more and more. And it really doesn't matter what branch of government it is, whether it's the, the uh, president um, making legislation through executive order or the legislation um, stepping outside of its authority to do things like tell us how we have to spend more money or better yet spend the money for us on things like Luma which is lights on building but um, yeah or making us buy products like compulsory schooling you know the Binghamton City School District spends over $18,000 a year per student and those kids are as dumb as rocks seriously I homeschool my kids and I do it for less than a thousand dollars a year and then I'd like to talk about um, 
I missed the last council meeting, but the council meeting before that, every single person here, minus Dr. Councilman, voted yes to put a propaganda program in the schools. Because we need to teach kids, we need to indoctrinate them into this idea that cops are there to protect them. Really. Because the last time I read the intent of the founders of this nation intended for you to be able to protect yourself and they were supposed to just secure liberty, personal liberty, which is the liberty to change one's situation and the freedom of locomotion, and natural liberty, things like raising your children, keeping the fruits of your labor. But that doesn't happen anymore because now you guys have given yourself some convoluted vehicle in the form of a uh, state corporation, the corporation of the city of Binghamton, in which you insist that, hey, you know what? We're going to tax you for what we can, and we're going to spend that on things that you don't want, whether it be a crappy school system, lights on buildings, or some business that we need to play favorites with because, hey, you know, there is no capitalism anymore. I'm not allowed to consider my own utility for these things. And for those of you who've never picked up an economics book, utility is how I value, how I use something. I have no use for Luma. I think that is some really just kitschy, ugh. So, um, yeah. As far as the legislation goes, I see a lot of this sloppy work, and a great example would be a few years I came down here to verify some executive offices, and that would be the police officer. So according to the PBO, public officers are supposed to be bonded, and they're supposed to have a surety. Well, the record, what was on record, was not a complete record because it was absent of a jurat. There was no record of duration on these oaths for the city of Binghamton officers. I also had requested um, the surety and the bond on the undertaking for the office of police officer for the city of Binghamton, and I was not confronted with that. In fact, I had uh, called corporate counsel at the time, I believe this was back in 2014, and they just got the run around. It's kind of the same way I do at the DMV when I call the DMV. I just wanted to note for the speakers on the uh, zoning legislation, it is available on the City of Binghamton's website. Um, if you go to the City of Binghamton calendar, uh, you go to October 23rd, uh, you click on City Council Business Meeting. Uh, that was when the public uh, hearing was opened. So if you click on that, uh, there's a whole list of uh, several um, things that were discussed at that meeting. Third link down says zoning attachment, so if you care to look at the, uh, the updated uh, zoning legislation, it's available on the city's website. Thank you, Council. Anyone else want to speak at this ordinance? Let's go forward. See none, we'll move on. Yeah. Council, Council McCrum, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was just wondering about the C6 legislation. It was referred. It was referred to the planning commission at our last meeting. Okay. I don't think we're not going to go out until we finish that, right? The C6 legislation is not on the agenda. Okay. And neither is the legislation that's still open for public hearing tonight. Um, that's not on your agenda to vote on. Um, the C6 ledge has been referred to the Planning Commission, and when this piece of legislation receives a specific or sufficient number of sponsors, at that point it would be added to our agenda. But since sponsorship was withdrawn last week, it's not on the Jess, would you like to set the public hearing, please? Um, prior to continuing, does Council 
wish to keep the public hearing open on the piece of legislation that was just discussed. Yes. Is there a second? Yep, there's no vote required to keep it open, just a vote required to keep it closed. Just wanted to make sure that the state goes. Next on the set public hearings. The Binghamton City Council, the mayor of the city of Binghamton, will hold a public hearing regarding the proposed updates to the city's citizen participation plan requested by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, on November 20th, 2019, at the regularly scheduled business meeting. The Binghamton City Council and the Mayor of the City of Binghamton will hold a public hearing regarding the proposed consolidated annual performance and evaluation report paper requested by the Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD on November 20th, 2019 at the regularly scheduled business meeting. <clears throat> now on the public comment, you have five minutes to speak. Please be respectful. Good evening, Tyre Stellas. Um, congratulations on your re-election. Absolutely. Uh, I came down to follow up on a couple of the requests for legislation I submitted back in August. This is the uh, regarding the Financial Ethics Disclosure Act for Binghamton officials, which basically adopts the same process across the government deposit that the county uses and applies that to the mayor uh, and his department heads to ensure we have the highest standards of ethical leaders and to improve transparency and accountability in City Hall. The second one was just annual reporting of assessment reductions. Very simple annual report, one pager, two pager that the assessor has to post publicly online that shows all of the privately owned properties in which he personally or the Board of Assessment Review had reduced the property assessment. As you know, I, I suggested these reforms following the disclosure that there was both unethical and illegal actions that were uncovered, um, both by citizens as well as internal investigation by the law department, by the assessor that directly benefited Mayor Rich David by thousands of dollars a year. When I, I sent this to you and then sent three emails over the following three weeks, didn't hear back from you, so I came down here and asked you in September um, where the status was, and you said that they were under review. Um, so I thought I'd come back down after the election to show you that my interest was never partisan. My interest is always improving government, ethical government. So I look forward to working with you on this. Do you have any update on where they stand? They're still under review by the clerk's office, so I don't have an update. The clerk's office is conducting the review? Because I mean, the clerk's office sent the legislation to you. I thought you had sent it to the law department for review. What is the clerk's office doing with the review? Checking to make sure the number falls in line with the last yeah. legislation? I can I I I clarify. Um, the clerk's office has looked at other similar legislations in other municipalities and intends to present something to council along those lines just to see how other communities have addressed the issue in the past that are not required to have that by state law. State law requires the county to have it, doesn't require the city to have it, nor does second class city's law. Doesn't mean it's not a good idea. Just trying to make sure that it's consistent with, the, with what other communities have done. Okay. As someone who proposed that, and I know a couple council members here also expressed interest in seeing that move forward, will I be notified when that decision is made or if they ever are presented? When the proposed ledge is presented to council, it will be an agenda item at a work session. Um, I don't have any objection, and I don't think the clerk's office has any objection to letting you know since you suggested it in the first place when it comes before work session. That would be great. Thank you. I certainly hope that you know we don't have to rely on mandated um, ethical Agreed. standards. Uh, I know you do, uh, and, but I'm just saying in, in regards to the parties. But I will say I, I do question um, I do question the Republicans' commitment to transparency and ethics. Um, and I'll say that what what we saw in this last election, and I heard this from many people. I've been here for 15, 15 years. I've never seen a more vile 
disgusting, race-baiting, grotesque attack and smear campaign launched on every single Democratic candidate, launched on people who weren't even in the race, launched on volunteers, volunteers of candidates. And also, of course, what happened uh, with Mr. Livingston. So thank you for your service. I think you have done more in 10 months than what some of your outgoing colleagues have done over two terms. Um, yeah, what your crime was that you cared, that you wanted to fulfill your promise to presidents, to make government more transparent, to increase access to City Hall in the decision-making process for all citizens, and the fact that this local GOP and Broom Kingpin, BJ Data, and Mayor Rich David saw that as such a threat, speak so much more volumes about their character than yours. So thanks for your service, man. I hope to get a no when you guys want to consider ethics. John, so I've been continuing on. Let's continue on that theme of for what happened to Angela Riley. Uh, she's a professional woman associated with the university. She's not some lunatic that's running around uh, looking at pictures of Castro and Che Guevara. So I, I mean, when you treat somebody like that that way, now it's, it, it 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 might be a little justified with the other people because they're in your face like people and. Uh, you know, they've got a track record up in Albany. So if you want to take on certain members of an organization as being extremists, I mean, not everybody's as good humored as me. You know what I mean? You know, I, I can you know, yell and scream and everything else, and we can laugh about it. But uh, that was a, a, a very low point in the city's history, uh, and I hope it will be remembered. Now, the interesting thing to me is the, uh, the uh, Giovanni Sprint, you're functioning well without him. Imagine that. Imagine that. This PhD, you know, and everything's moving right along just like it always did. So I, I, I guess you need less council people. You didn't, you didn't uh, appoint anybody. Now let me tell you something. If three people walk out of here, you're out of business because there's no quorum. You know, so you think you're cute by doing this, setting this stuff up, but you're really of people that don't know anything about government at all. All you know about is grabbing the paycheck. Now I made an issue, I always made an issue when people uh, didn't show up at these meetings. And I remember you were after Leah Webb. And then this goes, is there a pattern? You know, where, where does Leah Webb live? You know, where does she live? And it was a big thing. And then uh, Bill Burr. Now Bill Burr was, left a message to a union guy, can you do anything for me? I mean, to me, you know, that doesn't mean anything. Can you do anything for me? You know, I mean, if, if you were to, every, if you wouldn't have a county legislature, you wouldn't have a state senate, you wouldn't have an assembly, you wouldn't have a congress if that was the, if you can do anything for me, if that was the standard. Now, did Mr., uh, has the attorney uh, been hired for the uh, investigation of Dan Livingston? And how much are they charging? Has, have, have they been hired? Has Mr. Livingston received a bill of particulars or some sort of uh, a list of charges against him? Is this going to be forgotten about on January? Are you just going to smear somebody two weeks before an election? First, I called somebody in the media. No, he actually he sent me the press release that went on, somebody that had been in those news desks for a long, long time. And I said, well, did you ever get a press release by, like this before with quotations from council people? And he said, no, we never got one. There's never been a press release that has come here with quotations of council people. So uh, what, what's it all about? It was just a cheap political shot, now, was it? Let's admit it. The election is over with. Mission accomplished. Let, let, uh, let's admit what it really was. I just asked. Uh, Mr. Papstrat, how he felt Sophia Resonetti is on the board of the children's home. 
She's directly responsible for supervising that thing, oversight. What do you got there? Child pornography. You got people complaining. They fell on deaf ears over there. So you want to investigate that? Did you want to investigate Joseph Zakuski uh, on the uh, 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 Officer Sager 14, where it says that people are willing to testify that Joe Zakuski was having sex with other officers' wives and sending them out on, on things while he was doing it so it made it convenient? You didn't want to investigate that. You have one minute remaining. Okay, so I want to know, as a citizen, I want to know when that lawyer is going to be hired, uh, how much he's going to charge, when the bill of particulars, because who's, who's his accuser? I mean, a Jared Cram? I've got a million questions about it. Well, who the hell is Jared Cram? Who elected Gerald, uh, Jared Cram? I mean, you know, I want to see specific charges. I, you know, I love Chris. After, after that whole tar and feather job, well, we don't want to make it look bad. You know, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want to make it look like we're out to get you. They can. This is a joke. This is a joke. This is not civilized governance at all. It's complete self-parody. But good news, good news. If that election for district attorney handles the Libertarian Party is the hottest ticket in town. No, it's not. He's a fake Libertarian. Oh. He's not a fake libertarian. He got the nomination of the party head. He's a little more fake libertarian lady than you're a real Democrat. Excuse me, your time is up, sir. John McEnroe, baby. Right back at you. <coughs> Shana Cole, Libertarian, First Ward. Um, libertarians believe in self-governance. Self-governance does not support a democracy because in a democracy, like a corporation, there is a minority and there is a majority, okay? It has nothing to do with color, race, sex, uh, gender, or how you identify. It has to do with your rights as an individual. That's what self-governance is. We were supposed to have a Republican form of government. A Republican form of government. The distinguishing feature in a Republican form of government is the lodgment of sovereignty. The lodgment of sovereignty is not with a majority or a minority, okay? And an example of a majority rule would be the Jim Crow laws that happened in the 60s down south, right? They decided that the minority didn't have the right to associate with who they wanted to, so they made segregation laws, which were clearly unconstitutional. So now we're looking at, legally speaking, legislative edict, right? Because they have no authority to tell us these kinds of things, but yet they do, and they say it's law, it's law, it's law. Just like everything else they do. Your child has to wear a helmet, your child has to go to our schools, and you have to pay for it. We get to plan what you do. We get to zone what you do. We get to tell you what you can and can't do with your private property based on code. And then you do anything to try to improve that property. And we get to come in and assess you and tax you for your shelter. The problem here is I don't think anybody here knows what form of government we're supposed to have or the proper governance. Heck, half of you probably don't even know what a citizen is because by definition, citizens are corporations. Government is supposed to facilitate trade, but we don't see government doing this. We see government planning our lives and then enforcing it upon us with guns, with um, out through through the legally system here at the DA's office, um, through the Bar Association, which is what a 506 whatever, and they tell us all it's the law, it's the law, it's the law. But yet no one stops to question what the law is. Does anybody here? Can anybody here give me a definition of what the law is? It's the decree of the sovereign. So who's the sovereign? And what is sovereignty? Well, sovereignty is the supreme authority. And since we're supposed to live in a republic, 
The lodgment of sovereignty is with who? The people as individuals. The Constitution starts out for the federal government, we the people, first person plural, right? Meaning I as one of an indefinite number of many other individuals. And then powers are enumerated. Enumerated means listed. So where in the enumerations do you get to tell me what I can and can't have for personal property? When do you get the fruits of my labor through direct taxation, which can be used discriminatorily, and it has been. Same thing with property taxes. So many of you liberals have brought up with uh, Rich David and the property tax assessments. You don't think that these things are being used discriminatorily? But yet, you're the ones who clamor for more taxes. And then over here, we have the Republicans who are like, yes, we're going to lower taxes, but they don't. Because yeah, well, they're business friendly. But all they do is pick winners or losers because they get to go in and like, ooh, the, the convergence of corporate and state power. Well, that's just fascism, and we see that now, but nobody wants to call it out. I don't think anybody here knows what proper governance is. You're supposed to do one thing, keep the roads open. Keep them from being adversely possessed by those using them as places of business for trade because you're supposed to secure personal liberty, which is the freedom of locomotion, but you don't do that, but you do everything else to interfere with that, whether it be our right to contract, because you've interjected yourself in many, many occasions as a third party into what is essentially a two-party contract between me and my kids to teach them. I gotta send them to, oh, no, no, and then you screwed that up. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this on my own. Excuse me, time is up. Thank you for speaking. How are we doing? It's Howard Reeve. I am the facilities engineer at the wastewater plant. Excuse me, what's your address, sir? It's Conklin. Let's we'll take a motion. Second. Rules are suspended. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to make it brief. I feel like it's uh, uh, it's an opportunity while I'm still a public servant here to speak while Dan is recording this and just. Remind the public that uh, you know we're still at the wastewater plant. We're still working hard. Uh, things are <clears throat> approaching finalization. Um, we're working very, very hard against um, adverse conditions, and we're just waiting for an answer. And uh, I just wanted to remind the public that we're we're still there. We're still working, and we're still waiting for answers. I'm not going to ask you here if you have an answer. I'm sure we don't. And again, I just wanted to, to to keep the point valid in the public's mind while the public still has a view of this. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, anyone else wish to speak? Please come forward. See, now we'll close that segment of the meeting. On to the preferred agenda. Not the preferred agenda, I apologize. Introductory ordinance 19 115, considered finance, council of Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to ask unanimous consideration of ordinance 19 115. Second. This is an ordinance to amend the 2019 Department of Public Works budget for. Uh, on call day and salt and sand. What's your comments on this? Motion to call. Councilman Mason? Aye. Councilman Cross? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Papastrak? Aye. Councilman Matza? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. Six A's, one absent scratchy.
Your next order is 19-116, consider finance. Council Pastor. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'd like to ask for unanimous consideration for ordinance 19-116. So, this is an ordinance to amend the 2019 Fire Department budget for COVID time. Any questions or comments on this? Call. Question or call? Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilwoman Krause? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Tapestrap? Aye. Councilman Monzo? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. Six A's, one absence. Introductory ordinance 19-117, considered finance, Councilman Tapster. Thank you, Mr. President. As we announce consideration of ordinance 19-117. This is an ordinance to amend the 2019 Department of Public Works budget for construction materials. Questions or comments? Call. All the questions. Question by call. Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilwoman Krantz? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Pavistrap? Aye. Councilman Monson? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. Six days, one absence granted. Introductory ordinance 19 118, considered employees. Councilman Pavistrap. Thank you, Mr. President. As we unanimous consideration for ordinance 19 118. Second. This is an ordinance to amend chapter 124. Uh, dash 44.A, payment schedule for health insurance premiums for officers and employees not covered by collective bargaining agreements in 2020. Questions or comments on this? Call the question. Question by call. Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilman Cross? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Papastrap? Aye. Councilman Monzo? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. Six days, one absent. Director of Ordinance 19119, considered finance, Councilman Pabstrap. Thank you, Mr. President. It's for unanimous consideration of Ordinance 19 119. Second. This is an ordinance to amend the 2019 Fire Department to accept revenue for training of new firefighters from the village of Johnson City, the village of Mendicott, and the city of Norwich. Questions or comments on this? Question by call. Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilwoman Krantz? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Tapestra? Aye. Councilman Monzo? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. Six days, one absence granted. Introductory Ordinance 19 120, Consider Finance, Councilman Tapestra. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for <coughs> unanimous consideration of uh, Ordinance 19 120. Second. This is an ordinance to amend the 2019 <coughs> budget to transfer funds to legal services. Questions or comments? Mr. President? Yes. Councilman Thank you. So, um, I, uh, so it's come to my attention that, uh, that this attorney, that or this attorney's office that was spoken of uh, at the work session um, has already been engaged for their services in some fashion. I'm not really clear on whether there's a contract or just some sort of verbal engagement, but um, I'm a little concerned about this because, well, first of all, we haven't even voted yet. Um, and also because uh, just a, as a matter of process, um, this appears to be, if we have in fact engaged uh, for these legal services, um, without going through city council, uh, appears to be a violation of the city's procurement policy. Um, if you look at the city's procurement policy, um, section C1, it states, city council must approve any contracts for professional services exceeding $10,000, provided, however, that during any calendar year where the cumulative amount of professional service contracts awarded by the Board of Contract and Supplies equals $60,000 or more, the threshold drops to $1,000 for City Council approval of, a, of additional contract unless otherwise permitted. Now I'm not sure if, I haven't, I haven't been able to find an otherwise permitted uh, that would negate this section of the city's procurement policy and I did reach out to the clerk's office unsuccessfully to obtain a 
um, tabulation of the uh, amount of professional services contracts that have been awarded here to date. Uh, so I just went into the minutes from the Board of Contract and Supply. Um, and I, you know, I, I, was, I had to read through to make sure that the uh, definition of professional services contract that I was working with, looking at the Board of Contract and Supply minutes, was correct. Um, so my best guess, because there were actually four meeting minutes that were missing from the city's website, which I've also yet to be able to obtain from the clerk's office, although I did just ask this morning, so I'm not you know, throwing it on them or whatever, but um, the three most recent are missing, so I'm not even sure whether, whether this legal services um, contract or whatever is going on even went through the Board of Contract and Supply. But the total that I have here to date is 118000 $325.50. So that well exceeds the uh, $60,000 uh, maximum that would uh, result in any sort of contract for legal services to come before the Binghamton City Council. Um, and I mean, I, I guess it's conceivable that the contract is for less than $1,000, but since Corporation Council presented us with a estimate of $2,500, to $7,500, I think it's reasonable to assume that uh, any contract, if there is such a contract for legal services, would exceed that $1,000 minimum. So what I'm, what I'm asking for is actually for this body to, um, to assert its authority to govern this city process correctly. And you know, honestly, that is really what is uh, is being. Put on me at this point is that um, is that somehow the fact that something happened that wasn't supposed to happen is an indication of some larger conspiracy or issue that warrants spending taxpayer dollars to conduct an investigation in the eve, on the eve of an election. Um, I would say that the same holds true for the city. That the city is responsible to follow the rules that govern the city and to come in compliance with the procurement policy and also of course to just get some basic answers about what exactly is happening right now, what legal services have been uh, contracted or engaged with at this point and under what authority, frankly. Um, also I just want to kind of reiterate something that, that came up during the work session on this issue, which is that, you know, Councilman Taylor and I had some, I would say, reasonable questions about the scope of this review that not only weren't answered, but were met with what I would call hostility and derision from Corporation Council at that meeting. Um, and just to, to reiterate, the questions are, you know, what is the scope of this investigation? You know, where does it where does it start? Where does it end? Are there are there goals in mind? Um, who is being investigated? Um, for what reason has this outside review begun? Um, why is it necessary? And what's our timeline? You know, are we are we just going endlessly? Are we just following the as as, as Corporation Council said at the meeting, are we just asking questions and seeing where that leads us, or is there some definition of what we're doing? And, you know, ultimately, if, if the, the goal of this is just to, to say Dan's a bad guy, then, then that's what it is. But I think that this body has a responsibility to, if we're going to spend taxpayer dollars, and frankly, it's a lot of money. If we're going to spend that much money of, of taxpayer dollars on an outside review, we, we owe it to the taxpayers to at least have some sort of a, a goal of having summary findings to figure out what we can do better moving forward. Because if we're just spending this money to, to drag me through the mud, I don't think that that really serves the public interest. But if we're spending this money to ultimately figure out what happened, why it happened, and how we can keep it from happening again, because 
frankly, it seems like there's already something that happened earlier with Councilwoman Price that, you know, I'm not saying it was the same thing, but asking these questions at this point could prevent having yet another instance of something similar happen in the future. So I'm voting no on this. Thank you. Council President, do you mind if I... Sure, in regards to contract and supply, the clerk's office is not the secretary for contract and supply. In regards to your email, we forward that immediately to Mike Derby, who is the secretary for contract and supply. In regards to the minutes, that's what we ask them to provide to you. Councilman Lewis, I'm going to let Matt from Corporation Council answer you or give his side of what's transpired. Is there a contract? 
I don't believe that there has been any. I know. I, we don't know the answer. We don't. We don't. How, how would the corporation how, council know the answer? We don't. We don't. Why, why would the corporation council know the answer to whether there is a contract for legal services? The corporation the council, Ken Frank, obviously knows whether or not they've signed some kind of retention agreement with a third, with a third party reviewer. I imagine that they're a council, they're, they're an attorney, and it's an attorney. We don't have personal knowledge of that, so we can't represent that on the record. Um, what I can say is that in our budget, the outside council line doesn't cover the maximum amount that was pitched to <coughs> city council on Monday. City council, in its rightful place, thank you to Sean and Cole, controls the purse strips. Okay, that's one of the checks and balances of our system. So you can choose to authorize an amount above what is in the budget. I don't know what our total budget is, but I think that the total amount of 7,500 exceeds what's in the current outside council line for the office of corporation. I, I believe Ken said there was 5,000 left uh, at the work session. That sounds about right. Yes. And I believe the total line for the year is 20,000. 20, yeah. So that's and that, so that's essentially I think what we're talking about when we say that that was already approved. That that's money that's in Corporation Council's budget in that line for outside council. Um, doesn't need to be decided tonight, but certainly you guys have the authority to decide it tonight. Um, Corporation Council never, as a matter, likes to zero out the outside council line prior to the end of the year. Um, therefore, if it's an amount that goes above, I think what's in our current line, uh, it's seeking uh, it's seeking an amendment to the budget so that it doesn't potentially go down to zero. You know, we've got to something else happens. We hire outside counsel in a lot of different matters, and we have several actively working for us right now. Can uh, Matt, can you explain uh, how you read Section C1? To, uh, to describe not the aggregate of, uh, of contracts awarded here to date, but the aggregate of contracts awarded here to date that, that fell under that 10,000, or fell up that, pardon me. It's okay, you're saying the not, why it's yeah, not how did you arrive, I, I, I'm reading it and I don't see, I don't see it in, in the, the black and white, how you arrived at that, so I'm interested know how you arrive at that conclusion. Well, I think our, our reading of it is, uh, you know, what I said at the outset, that that, that uh, unless, unless otherwise permitted line. So we have uh, uh, corporate, the Office of Corporation Council has money in the budget, uh, in a budget line for outside council, and that, that gets approved during the budget uh, by city council. So that that's, that's essentially where that where that comes from. To say this legislation is coming forward to to say it a, to say it a different way. Profession that line of the procurement policy applies to professional services contracts. Okay. Corporation council amending the outside or city council's amendment of the outside council budget line doesn't fall under the procurement policy at all. Even if it did fall under the procurement policy, you guys are well under that six. I have, to, I have to say, I'm, I'm still, I'm still not clear as to. It, it just seems so plain to me that, that this is, that this is referring to the, the aggregate of, of contracts. And if we haven't explained it well enough, and you're not clear, well, I mean, that's, you're, a, you're that, that's a sufficient. Yeah. If anybody is not clear, and you guys have questions about whether or not the Office of Corporation Council and the City Council is complying with the law, by all means. Do either hold it or vote no, right? Um, coming here to obviously what we want, what the work session is for, is for answering some of those questions. When this piece of legislation got signed out, it was now before before you. I hate that to be the moment where um, what is legal and what is not legal is being debated because um, what's before you is not something that the Office of Corporation Council clearly views to be in violation of our code or policy or proper procedure, etc. So if there are about if there are questions and you think your questions are valid and they have not been answered.
answered sufficiently, by all means vote no or take a listen. Are there questions or comments on 19-120? Mr. President? Yes. I, w I would just add that, you know, not only, I would reiterate that, yes, you know, the, the questions, not only weren't they answered sufficiently, they, it didn't really feel like there was an attempt to even answer the questions at the work session. Um, and I, I mean, I, I feel like it's really unfortunate that um, not, just, not just myself, but members of the public were curious about this contract and that Corporation Council has siloed different people in their office so that you're coming to this meeting unable to answer a question that seems pretty critical to um, critical to the, the matter of the discussion. I just want to go on the record saying I think that's really unfortunate. Thank you, Council. Other questions or comments on one that is one two zero. Councilwoman Cross. Yeah, thanks. Um, all the city council members asked to have it go outside of our own legal because it is the involved in councilman, which I think it is better to have it go outside. And you, you said you agreed, Conrad um, Teller agreed, every single council person agreed that we wanted it to go outside. And now you're trying to pick numbers. I don't know. Um, do you want corporate council to do it? Because I don't think that would be very reasonable. I'd rather have it go outside to another legal source to make sure that the ethics is done, not within house, but outside the house. And that's what we had all discussed, and that's why we decided to do this. Um, you're confusing me with all your questions. It's really easy to read the legislative piece and what it says. And that's it. Thank you, Council. Other questions or comments? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just clarify. Primarily because I think as, uh, as the Office of Corporation Council, we try and come as prepared as possible to meeting. The one question that you asked that I don't know the answer to, and neither does Matt, is is there a retainer agreement that has been executed by Ken with some other attorney? I don't know the answer to that. When this body voted, I should say, when this body had the discussion two work sessions ago, um, with regards to whether or not the majority wanted the Office of Corporation Council to uh, essentially en enlist a third party to begin some review of the internship, not you in particular, that didn't need to be voted on. Similar to a lot of the issues or requests for legislation or queries that City Council poses on a regular basis during a work session, all that we need is for a majority, strong poll, to say, yeah, we want you to look into that. You guys formalize that by unanimous vote. Um, so, you're right, I don't have the answer to whether or not there is a retainer agreement. However, I do have the answer that the action of contacting a third party to engage in the inquiry was authorized by this body and was squarely within the authority of Corporation Council as they are authorized to do under the law. Your secondary question, or tertiary question, which is, isn't this very act of contacting this third party uh, investigator or putting this amendment before council illegal, the answer to that, I can tell you with certainty, is no. And I think Matt and I went into several reasons why that's true. But I think we are prepared to answer those questions. But you're right. I don't know whether or not a retainer agreement has been executed. I think it's a valid question. And it's an answer that I will ensure our clerk's office circulates to this council tomorrow. Okay. Are there questions or comments on 19-120? Okay, uh, since Stan brought up the um, BU, I just wanted to clarify to everybody here tonight the reason why I brought it up is I tried to have an MOU with MPA students at um, Binghamton University. They turned me down because they said I was neither a full time employee and I don't have an office here at City Hall. Um, anyone who is required to get an MOU has to provide those. Since I couldn't provide them, I couldn't get it. Um, I just want to make sure that one maybe two university is not playing favorites because I've seen it happen before and I want to make sure that they are held accountable. It doesn't matter what political letter we have next to our name. Everyone should be able to get in and work with Binghamton University without being harassed. And I know that they have harassed other people who are not a Democrat as well. 
and I want to make sure that it doesn't happen. And for me, that's what I'd like to get out of it. Other questions or comments? House Will First, I would, I would just remind the, the council that at the time that you uh, reached out to the university, I'm guessing, because I think it happened a while ago, you had a dean in front of your name. So if there was some sort of. No, because everything you did. There was some sort of partisan uh, aspect to the way that the Masters of Public Administration program uh, puts interns out there, then I don't think you would have uh, registered as the wrong side of things for them if, if they, in fact, work with me because of my status as a Democrat. But I would also, I just want to point something out, which is just this whole, it, like, there is an email that, that went out between. Uh, that, that came from Thomas Sinclair from the Masters of Public Administration program on September 23rd to Ken Frank, um, in which he said, our department understood that the placement was not with the city council as a whole. You know, and, and it was at that moment that, honestly, this whole thing should have ended. Um, because if there was any suspicion that somehow the university was misled, uh, Mr. Sinclair clarified that for Corporation Council, but instead, the matter just got pressed even further. Um, and also, just, just for the, the councilwoman, you, you said you were not clear on what um, I was even really getting at here. What I'm getting at is that, you know, if we're gonna spend taxpayer dollars to conduct an outside review, and if we're going to yeah, I mean, we need to figure out what it is that we're reviewing. I mean, it, to just vote to say, we want an outside review, there's no details there. It's like, take for instance the, the contract for services with uh, Beth and Bode's, uh, or rather, not Beth and Bode, but uh, the other guy, uh, Bruce Toby's boy. When, when he came and gave us our oral presentation and told us that there wasn't going to be a written report, I looked back at the contract. And the contract that this body constituted back in October of last year approved had no uh, specific explanation of the, the services to be pro provided, like what work was going to be provided, for instance, yeah, like this, with what I was talking about. You know, what are they going to do? Um, what's the reason for it? Uh, why is it necessary? What's the timeline? And what's the work that's going to be provided? None of that stuff was in that contract. And when you approve a contract like that, then it can go any which way. The, the, the result can be almost anything at all. And the reason why I bring this up is because uh, we're talking about, or my colleagues here are talking about this being a process that is not political, that is not partisan. Um, and I'm just saying, let's, let's get specific. There's, there's nothing wrong with getting specific with how we're contracting. And not, I'm not talking about verbal agreements with you know, how we're describing it to the attorneys, you know, maybe behind closed doors or whatever, on a face-to-face -face meeting. I'm talking about getting specific in the contract so that um, we get what we need out of this process and so that the public gets something out of this process as well because we're spending their money to do it. We need to move on that. Any other questions or comments on 190-120? Call a question. Question to call. Councilman Lewison? Nay. Councilwoman Cross? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Nay. Councilman Papastra? Aye. Councilman Monza? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. It's four A's, two nays, one absence. Great. Introductory ordinance 19 19 121, consider finance, Councilman Fabster. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for unanimous consideration of ordinance 19 121. Second. This is an ordinance to amend the 2019 Community Development Administration budget to fund temporary services for a consultant to assist with the CDBG program. Questions or comments? All questions. Question or comment? Councilman Livingston? Aye. 
Councilwoman Crowns? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Capstrap? Aye. Councilman Matzo? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. Six days, one hour since we're eight. Introductory resolution 19-90, consider finance, Councilman Pastor. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask unanimous consideration of the resolution 19-90. Second. This is a resolution authorizing the city to accept a $50,000 grant from the Ruth County District Attorney's Office Traffic Diversion Program. Comments or questions on this? All the questions. Question on the call. Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilwoman Crowns? Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Papistrat? Aye. Councilman Malzo? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. Six days, one absent. It's great. Introductory resolution 19 91, consider finance, Councilman Papistrat. Mr. President, I'd like to ask for the introductory unanimous uh, consideration of resolution 19 91. This is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with John W. Danforth Company. Change order number two for pipe work at the digester gas conditioning room and digester control building and for miscellaneous work at various sites throughout the Big and Johnson City Joint Sewage Treatment Facility. Questions or comments? All the questions. Question of call? Councilman Livingston? Aye. Councilwoman Cross? Aye. Councilman Taylor? Aye. Councilman Papistra? Aye. Councilman Monzo? Aye. President Scanlon? Aye. Six A's, one absent scratching. Out of communications from council members, we'll start with Councilwoman Kratz. Thank you. Um, I just want to send a formal invite to anyone who's interested in joining the Libertarian Advocates of Broome County. Uh, right now we're working on men's rights in the court system. A lot of times men are looked down upon and Unfair uh, verdicts are often given to men, especially men of color. So we will be working on that. Also working with um, helping fathers have a role in their family. A lot of the times the court system kicks them right out of the family. We want to make sure this stops. We're also working on a halfway house. So if you want to come work with that, we're welcome to. There's a lot of different things we're working on. If you have ideas and you want to come work with us and you want to help us, you're welcome. Bring your ideas, bring your passion, and let's make a difference. Thank you, Councilwoman. I knew Councilman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations on your re-election. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, point everyone to the Boho Comedy Club Grand Opening happening this Friday at the Double Tree Hotel. It's a huge deal. We've got a comedy club coming to Binghamton, and that's a really, really, really exciting thing. There is a, uh, uh, a, a, a personal story to the origin of this club, and it's really just amazing to see it uh, opening up this Friday. It's something that the entire community should support, and it's just one of the many incredible things consistently happening in the fourth district that I'm so excited to share with everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Papistrat and Matzo uh, for starting a great series of planning committee meetings this past Monday to talk more in detail about the uh, zoning ordinance and code. Uh, I hope that we can continue uh, the conversation over the next few weeks and uh, get a, a really good consensus that you know, creates legitimate uh, rules around student housing that promotes affordable housing community in our community that creates a creates more walkable community and uh, it, you know I, I thought we had a good first meeting. Lastly, I'd just like to uh, uh, go off of my very first comment from this evening to congratulate all the winners uh, and all the candidates that ran in the most recent elections, specifically the city council elections. I do want to point out uh, that even with early voting and a very hotly contested district attorney's race, turnout here in the city of Binghamton was wildly low. It was so low this year. And I just want to take this time, I've only got a couple of months left on city council, 
the people that know me, including all of you, the people that know me in this community, know that I'm a straight shooter, that I don't, you know, uh, like to play in party politics, that what I say comes from what I think is best about this community and what I think really, really matters. And I was beyond horrified and disappointed this year at the level of atrocity that the Republican GOP party put out in their campaign mailers and in their negative campaigning. It was a, an effort designed to make people scared to vote. It was an effort designed to make people hate politics. It was an effort designed to make people believe that they that, that there shouldn't be any hope in City Hall for them. It's not. <laughs> but there should be. Government should be a place where people come together to create a positive change. That's what every one of us should believe by being here at the table. That's why folks like Jessica and Sharon and Matthew spend way more than 40 hours a week trying to make this community a better place and become public servants. And I think that every single person that supports and doesn't call out that kind of negative campaigning, doxing, and releasing private photos and information about volunteer canvassers, calling the most honest, rational people like Angela Riley criminal extremists, just so you can scare people from not going out to vote. Anyone who doesn't call that out, anyone that doesn't stand up and say they, they do not think that's okay, anybody that doesn't say, E. Joy Dada, Mayor David, how dare you represent our party in that way? It is demoralizing as a young person that is supposed to be inspired by public service. You have a, an obligation to stand up for positive government, not negative muslim muslim politics. And I don't say that it doesn't happen on both sides of the aisle. God sure does at the national level. But we have an opportunity in local politics to stand against that. And I think if you don't stand up and say something, you're really failing the public, you're failing young people that look to you, and you're failing yourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And the Councilman Pepster. Thank you, Mr. President. I know that was a very hard uh, felt speech you gave, uh, Conrad, but it does happen on both sides. It happens every year, whether it be national, state, or local. Mudslinging has been part of our canvas of uh, political canvas for, for many, many years. And uh, this year, the if I recall the numbers, they were no different than they were the last uh, off year of elections. We had 1,700 people vote in my district, part for the course. 2,100 people in uh, Dan's district, part for the course. 700 some in your district, part for the course. That's far lower. Hmm? It's far lower this year. Maybe than from when you ran, but that is the number that's typical for Northside uh, voting. John, I'm not sure about yours, but I think you're right in the right same range. Yeah, I, I, you can go 900 to a month. So, yes, there is mudslinging, but um, you can't, I mean, to go out and, and make this passionate speech about Republicans when the, the both parties do it on a regular basis, and not just the election time, but there's mudslinging all through the year from members of your party against Republicans. So uh, I think I just take a little offense to that, that we're uh, some bad, bad guys and we're supposed to call everybody out. Let's do it, let's call everybody out. Let's call everybody that, on the Democrat side that's mudslings on a daily basis. Thank you, Councilman. And the Councilman Pazzo. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, congratulations on the re-election. I want to congratulate my councilman-elect Phil Strawn on his re-election, on his new appointment. So, congratulations, Phil. Uh, I'm going to miss it. We've got maybe six meetings left. I'm 
definitely going to miss being around the, this park. Uh, I'll still be around the streets, talking with people like I always have. And I enjoyed it very much. So, and uh, their campaign was pretty clean in my district, which I really enjoyed to see. They did a great job, Tim Ames, in both fields. There was no months in there, so I'm happy about that. Uh, they are going to be milling and paving parts of the streets in the south side of Barrington. Well, it depends if we get snow or not. So that's supposed to start tomorrow. So I just want to make everybody aware, be careful out there. Even if it does snow or if it doesn't snow, there will be some construction work going on on the south side of Barrington tomorrow. So yeah, that's that. Great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And Councilman Livingston. Thanking the sewage treatment plant staff who continue to come to these meetings. Honestly, I don't even know why at this point because this body obviously is uninvolved <coughs> with, the, um, with this process of privatization that looms over their heads. And you know, at this point, you know, we're coming coming into the holiday season. <coughs> it really, you know, be a nice gift for the holidays for the plant staff to be able to know whether they got to pinch their pennies because they're potentially going to lose their jobs or whether they can celebrate like people all over the city might. Um, I just, I just don't get it, you know. Um, it's like, I don't know what they, what they did to, to slight the city, what they did to deserve this. You know, some people here will, um, some of my colleagues will say that they they care about the, the workforce, but, you know, they're, they're crying out to us, and they have been for months, and I, I just don't see how you can care about them and and continue to stonewall, to stonewall them. And, and to say that this body couldn't, you know, well, we don't know anything, to say that this body can't, you know, put pressure on parties involved to furnish us with information is, is completely disingenuous. There's, out, there's absolutely a litany of things that we could do to uh, provide plant staff and members of the public with some clarity on this. Um, but, you know, when, well, I guess when you have the majority, you just, you don't have to listen to the key things. And I think that's that's unfortunate because I, I've heard about it constantly for months, not just from people who bother to show up, but from people who, whose doors I showed up to, um, from people contacting me from seven different directions, not just in the city of Bennington. I'm getting contacted by people from all over the valley who, you know, have now discovered their connection to this facility over the course of months of uh, of press coverage, you know, there are people who say, I had no idea that I was tied into the sewage treatment plant. You know, I thought over here in Port Dickinson, I was, you know, I didn't know where it went when I flushed. Well, they know now. Um, so, I mean, obviously it hasn't meant anything all these months. Hearing it from the plant staff or hearing it from us, hearing it from members of the public, so it's not going to mean anything, anything more now, but I'm just going to keep saying it. You know, we deserve answers. Everyone deserves answers. Uh, buying a house, and you know, I'm, I'm wondering what, you know, what that's going to mean. And I people tell me their bills went up 26 percent this year, and they were they had no idea what was happening. And you know, seniors living on fixed income, they're they're scared. They don't know what's coming. And and it doesn't seem like, oh, oh, there will be a 0% increase for next year, but, you know, the bond payment is 20 years, so, you know, you can, you can flatten it out for a year, but you've got to pay the bill. You can't spend so much money and not have to pay for it eventually. So I would encourage my colleagues to uh, act in a, in, a, in a majority fashion to uh, push on the comptroller to... Uh, come up with a three to five year projection of rate increases um, so that 
homeowners, renters, business owners all over the, the city, and you know, maybe some of that information would be valuable to people all across the valley so that they can budget. Um, and uh, I guess I'm, I'm this, this whole uh, outside review process. I think it just diminishes this this body. Um, I think it diminishes the city. I think it's uh, you know certainly you can you can win an election like that, but there's a cost to it. You know, there's a uh, damage the public trust and public institutions. I mean, I get it that, you, you know, my, my opponent and, and, you know, all the supporters, you know, pulled out all the stops to, you know, to, to defeat me. And that's fine. Like, you know, their elections come and elections go. But, you know, I don't think you realize the cost, the real cost of doing something like this. You know, that it takes so much work to build up trust in public institutions because, well, I mean, as, as Shauna talks about, you know, there, she, she kind of represents the, the fully other end of the spectrum where, you know, a lot of people just have zero trust for public institutions categorically. But I think there are a lot of people who want to believe, like Connor, that public institutions can, can serve the people. And it takes a lot of work to build up that trust. And doing something like this uh, diminishes it in a big way, awfully quickly, and in a way that it's going to be hard to rebound from. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion.